You know what I was really excited about a few years ago? 3D printing. 3D printing was supposed to change the game. I was supposed to have my own printer at home to print whatever I wanted. No more having to go to the store to buy stuff. I could get all of it immediately inside my own house. But now look at me in 2018. I'm over here waiting two entire days for a package from Amazon. And when I get mad and burn my Nikes in protest, I can't even immediately print a new pair of New Balances. Cause that's actually what you have to wear after you burn your Nikes. New Balances. Yeah. Or Crocs. None of my George Jetson fantasies came true. And on top of all of this, I got to see my 3D printing stocks get absolutely destroyed. So then why am I even talking about this dead industry? Well, as it turns out, now might actually be the time to start buying back into 3D printing stocks. And I know, I, I know what you're probably thinking. Like, no way, AK, I'm not about to buy into that trap again. Because, you know, fool me once, and then, you, you know, if you fool me again, that's worse than the first time. And you know that you, you know how that saying goes but just hear me out first i'm going to explain to you exactly why 3d printing stocks are actually a good buy so let me tell you this right now the 3d printing industry is about to enter a period of exponential growth that the market isn't accounting for at all but for you to actually see this i got to explain two concepts to you the first is the product adoption s curve and the second is the gartner hype cycle okay so first up we got the s curve now what the s curve does is show the typical growth and maturation process Process of a new technology through four stages. So the first stage, it's the intro or market development stage. So this is when the product is first brought to market, but there's no real proven demand for it. And also the product, you know, it's not fully proved out technically, it's just brand new. So in this stage, the sales are really low and they just kind of creep along. So example of this is tech eyewear. And by that, I mean Google Glass or more recently those Snapchat spectacles. Now when it comes to these things, you, you know, nobody's wearing them. And if you ever see someone wearing them, you immediately think, oh, what a tool. So yeah, there's still no proven demand. This market is just clearly still in the development stage. But then a technology will move to stage two, which is the market growth stage. So this is where demand accelerates and the size of the total market expands rapidly. This stage is also known as the takeoff stage. So an example of this is when that first iPhone came out. As soon as that happened, smartphones just took off. And that's also when people started making fun of me because I still had my Razer flip phone, which by the way, I still have not seen a cooler phone than that Razer. So I fully stand by my decision to keep that razor for so long. But anyway, next the technology moves into stage three, which is market maturity. At this stage, demand kind of levels off because you know, the market is saturated. Any growth mostly comes from a replacement of old items. And then of course the new family formation rate. And this stage is where we're at with smartphones currently. You know, at this stage, they're all pretty much the same, no matter what brand you get, whether it's an iPhone or Android or whatever. And you know, each year there's no new amazing phone being released. It's pretty much the same as old phone. But nowadays we do have the option to buy a gold iPhone 10 for a thousand bucks. For what? I'm I'm not sure. For a slightly better camera? To make, make fun of poor people? I, I don't know. I don't know what the point is. But after stage three, a technology enters stage four, which is the market decline. By this point, consumers are pretty much done with the product and sales start to drop. And this is also the time where a new technology is coming along to replace that older one. So a simple example here is when the horse and buggy got replaced by automobiles. And you guys know this happened a long time ago, but yet for some reason we're still measuring how powerful a car is by seeing how many horses it equals. I don't know, horsepower doesn't make much sense to me. But the key thing here that you want to pay attention to is the growth phase part of the S-curve, because this is obviously where growth starts to accelerate and sales growth becomes exponential. The money starts flooding in. And hint, hint, 3D printing is hitting that stage right now. Okay, now we can move on to the second concept, the Gartner hype cycle. And stick with me now, I promise this is really important for our 3D printing thesis. So basically what this chart will show is the typical hype and narrative cycle around a new technology. And this one progresses in five stages. And this is really important because narratives, especially when it comes to extreme hype, that's what drives the stock market. Okay, so the first stage, we got the technology trigger. So this is where a new technology is conceptualized. There's some prototypes made, but there's no real functional product. But either way, it spurs the media's interest. A great example of this is our buddy Elon Musk. This stage is his bread and butter. He loves throwing out these technological ideas and concepts and getting people excited. One of his latest things was that Neuralink project. You know, the one where we're gonna have a computer chip that links up to our brain. The hype surrounding that, you could call that the technology trigger stage. 
stage. And then from there, it moves to stage two, which is the peak of inflated expectations. So the new technology is actually implemented by early adopters and there's a ton of publicity around it. So this is like what we just saw in Bitcoin with the huge bubble. That's when we had the Bitcoin bros throwing out buzzwords like blockchain while riding around in their Lambos, you know, all that. Back at the end of 2017, that was the height of stage two and Bitcoin hype. Then you move on to stage three, which is the trial of disillusionment. So this is where the real life flaws and failures of the technology lead to the disappointment of all the people following it. So products end up being dropped by companies and investment kind of turns away. And that's exactly what we're seeing in the crypto space right now. You know, after that bubble popped, we got those same Bitcoin bros just crying themselves to sleep in their soon to be repossessed Lambos. But from there, you move on to stage four, which is the slope of enlightenment. So at this stage, the new technology's potential for future applications becomes better understood and more companies start testing it and actually implementing it in their processes. And this is also where you start seeing producers create second gen products. An example of this is augmented reality. You know, we're finally moving past just video game applications like in Pokemon Go. Oh, and here's another hint. 3D printing is in this stage as well. Then finally, you have stage five, the plateau of productivity. This is where the tech becomes wildly implemented and everyone understands its market applications. All right, so now we could take these two concepts, the S curve and the hype cycle and put them together and see what we get. So you can see here that the hype cycle actually peaks while the technology and its market are still in their infancy. And then right after that hype dies down, that's when the tech actually matures and adoption picks up. Things tend to take off when nobody's paying attention. So okay, let's apply this to the 3D printing industry. As far as the hype curve goes, we hit the peak of inflated expectations back in 2013. And you know, that was back when you saw 3D printing on the front page of everything. And that's back when I thought I'd be able to do stuff like print my own toilet paper and finally break free of those Charmin bears. And I'd be able to print new underwear too when I decided against laundry this week and conveniently ran out of toilet paper last week. But as we've seen, none of that came true. And now the hype has long passed and 3D printing stocks have been dead for the last four plus years. And by this point, we've basically passed through that trial of disillusionment. And now we're actually climbing that slope of enlightenment and we're on our way to that plateau of sweet, sweet productivity. But what's even more important is where we are in the S curve. And the data shows that the industry is actually in the middle of the growth or takeoff stage. So growth should be increasing exponentially over the next few years. The ARK Invest expects 3D printing to grow into a $65 billion industry in the next five years. And that's a growth rate of over 40% per year. That's huge. And here's the thing, the real opportunity for 3D printers in the industrial space. So check out this example from Erup. All three of these structures that you see support the same amount of weight. But the one on the far right was made through 3D printing and machine learning. And it actually weighs 75% less and is half the size of the structure on the far left. And that, that's just crazy. I mean, just look at how different these two things look. How do you even make something that complex, small, and weird looking? Like you gotta have the assistance of 3D printing and AI. That's the only way. And you know, that makes me excited because I can't imagine what they're gonna figure out to replace milk containers. I mean, will there finally be no more spilling when you're trying to pour out that brand new jug? Because that'd be great. You know, I'm, I'm just tired of my milk going everywhere. So please, please somebody make that happen. So really, when we take a look at 3D printing, we see an industry that according to the S curve and the hype cycle we just went over is about to explode in growth. And when it comes to the actual 3D printing companies, you have stocks that are really beaten down and priced like value plays. When in reality, they have potential like growth stocks. Stratasys is trading like a value stock at less than two times earnings. It also has a rock solid balance sheet with hardly any debt, a current ratio of 3.7, and a history of producing steady, reliable, positive free cash flow. All in all, we got a great opportunity here to get into a market that's extremely cheap and is about to explode in growth.